the most common mistake people make when preparing for a pitch or a speech? So let's start with pitch for my CEO founders in the room. And don't worry, I used to be a venture capitalist, so take the advice. It'll definitely give you the impact that you're looking for. I would say the biggest mistake founders make with their pitch is they don't communicate their founder POV enough. What is that? Founder POV is when you communicate your thesis as a founder on where the future of your business is going. I'll give you an, a great example of this. When Airbnb is Brian Chesky, the CEO of the company, pitched Airbnb in 2008-9, when everyone thought he was crazy, the way he explained the business was this. When we lead with design that optimizes for trust, we can scale this transaction between buyers and sellers in the marketplace on Airbnb at scale. Because before what happened with VRBO and HomeAway and all the other competitors is people didn't trust each other enough in the marketplace, so people don't transact enough times. But now with Airbnb, because their culture is very design-led, they're really empathetic to both sides of the transaction, the person who's renting out the Airbnb and the person who's using the Airbnb for a few days. So what happened, and the other piece that he mentioned in his pitch deck, is because of the recession, a lot more people will be more inclined to become hosts of Airbnbs, even if it's against societal culture, because they need the extra money. And he was absolutely bang on on that thesis because the number of hosts exploded and Airbnb was on a massive growth curve at the right time. So we want you to communicate your founder POV more, especially for my women in the room. What I've noticed, because I've coached a lot of women CEOs in the technology space, is they don't communicate their point of view enough proactively like men do. They wait for the venture capitalist, the investor, to ask them the right questions. But a lot of time, ladies, they won't ask you the right questions. It's up to you to communicate that value up front. Explain how smart you are about the industry. And there's a lot of great women entrepreneurs you can use as examples that I personally love. Sarah Blakely from Spanx, study her. She's amazing at communicating value and value prop. I also like uh, Jennifer Hyman, who's the CEO of Rent the Runway. The way she explains her value prop is really solid. Those are two in particular that I really enjoy listening to and how they pitch their solutions. So that's the founder POV. For my executives in the room, for speeches, I would say the most common mistake is definitely not practicing the correct structure. So most of them just practice, 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 but they're not intentional enough about the energy that they bring. And here's something that you can write down that I'll explain twice that applies to both demographics, whether you're CEO, whether you're an exec, is everything that comes out of your mouth is a reflection of your personal brand in the boardroom. And I'm sure a lot of us with meetings, we just walk in and we go, oh, yeah, there's another one meeting. Whereas when you present that way, when you showcase yourself that way, you're also getting judged by everyone else in the room by how you show up. So I encourage you, every time you step into a meeting, you want to sound like leader A. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the meeting. It's great to be here versus leader B. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Bring more energy into the conversations. How do we overcome our fear of public speaking, Brendan? So here's the way that I think communication is like a spectrum. I don't believe in this idea of removing the fear of communication altogether. If somebody called me right now and said, Brendan, I need you to coach Elon Musk on his communication skills tomorrow, I'd probably be afraid. It's probably not something I would say, oh yeah, this is zero stress. So it's the same situation with the fear. The goal is not to get rid of it, but rather outweigh it. So what do I mean by that? Let's use a quick analogy here. Let's say we got a boxing match. One side of the ring is the fear around communication, the anxiety, the stress that we can feel. And the other side of the ring is the message, the reason why we're delivering this. Why is this important? Why does this matter? So the goal is to make sure that when your message and your fear meet, that your message gets the knockout punch every single time. So when we think about me as a personal example, I didn't want to start Master Talk. I started making YouTube videos when I was 22 years old. And I started coaching C-suite executives when I was 23. But I had so much insecurity, so much imposter syndrome. Who am I to do all of this? But when I realized that I was making the videos for the 15-year-old girl who can't afford my services, that's what really led me to push through the fear because I believe the next Elon Musk is a seven-year-old girl in Cambodia. 
can afford a speech coach. So that message was way more important than the fear. And that's how you win in the end.